What is up, y'all? I'm Patrick. You know what channel you're watching. I'm back. Unedited, uncut, gorilla vlogging. Uh, thought I'd do something kind of double duty with you guys today. Now I'm gonna show a little bit of some spray, some spray painting stuff. And at the same time, tell you a story. I'm gonna regale you with a story. One of... Patrick's two true motorcycle stories. Okay, so we're going to start off, we're going to black base this panel. Now I'm not doing any kind of prep or anything like that because it's just a piece of crap little panel and I'm just showing you just how easy this technique is. Alright, so hang tight, let me spray this and we'll get back to the story. I don't know how much of this you can see on camera, but this is some of the marbling stuff I did on a different panel. I'm not doing this one red, but I hope you can see it. But the point is to show you how easy it is to get this kind of finish and this kind of graphic. Okay, so we sprayed our panel black. Uh, if you're doing bare metal, you're going to use some kind of sealer or primer. If you've got something that's already painted and the paint is really bonded and it's not coming off, you can just sand that surface and then paint over it. There's no need to strip all the way down to bare metal every time. So anyway, back to the story. And we're going to call this one Badge of Honor or the quickest way to spot the biggest asshole on the road. Okay, so it was a nice day. I grab my backpack, I jump on the Ninja, and I shoot down to the liquor store. On my way back from the liquor store, there's an intersection down the street from my house, and there's a bar right there. I won't call it a biker bar, but you do see Harleys there pretty regular, and you see other bikes too, so whatever is whatever. But anyway, just past the bar is the intersection. You know, it's 40, 50 mile an hour, I'm going, so as I come towards the intersection, I start to slow down. I don't know if you do, but when I start to slow down, I bump the throttle and ride the gear, unless I absolutely need to be on the brake. So that's what I'm doing. And as I come past the bar, I bump the throttle and downshift, and almost instantly, I hear the roar of a thunderous Harley. And I'm not hating, I'm all for a loud bike, but this one was louder and deeper than probably most of the Harleys you hear on a regular basis. I mean, it was deep and thunderous. Honestly, it sounded really good. But I didn't know if the guy was just starting his bike or if he actually revved his shit at me. So I proceed on, you know, I got traffic in front of me. I slow down, I pull up behind a row of cars, and I put about eight feet between my front wheel and the back bumper of the car ahead of me. Meanwhile, I can hear dude pull out and there's no other traffic and he comes up just short of me and I thought he was going to stop and not pull up next to me and kind of be like a dick, you know, like just shun me or whatever the hell. But to my surprise, he starts to ease up next to me. And I'm thinking, well, fuck, this guy's pretty cool. You know, I'll talk to this guy. Obviously, his bike's a beast. And as he eases up next to me, I start to turn and say something. But instead of stopping next to me, he pulls up past me and puts his front wheel right on the back bumper of this car. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know, what, what the hell? He's, he's like, put his tire on this guy's back bumper. And I'm thinking, why the hell would you pull so close to that car? But, hey, whatever. And then it dawns on me. He pulled up that far because he's trying to show me something. There's something he wants me to see. What is it that he wants me to see? Take a guess. His fucking colors. Hey, man, if you want to get patched up, by all means, knock yourself out. I ain't got no beef against guys that are patched up. I ain't got no beef against MCs. I personally am unaffiliated. You know, I don't get into all that politics. I just want to fucking ride. But... It's obvious that's what he's doing. He's showing me his patch. And he belongs to a local club that's 
kind of notorious. You know, I'm not going to say their name because I don't want 20 of these assholes showing up my fucking house. But if you live in the Cincinnati area, they're kind of like the Hells Angels want to be of, of the area. And if, if you're from around here, you can guess who I'm talking about. So, hey, whatever's whatever. He shows me his colors. So we sit there, and the light changes. Well, we start to take off. He flubs his takeoff, and I pull right past him, and I start through my turn. And he gets his shit together and finally takes off and blasts up, you know, and he makes the turn. And I give him the outside lane. You know, I don't cut over on him or try to block him by, or nothing like that. And the guy makes the turn on the outside of me, and as we get straight, he just, like, lets it fucking rip. And the instant he's ahead of me, he, like, jumps in front of me to block my path. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, really, bro? Really? I, if you're out there and you got colors and you're part of an MC, hey, man, I got nothing but respect for you, but some of these guys, it's almost like they join an MC just to be the biggest prick they can be because they know they got a crowd of guys backing them. And I don't know what this dude's beef was. Maybe he just had a buzz and I just look like an easy mark, but I didn't bother fucking with the guy. You know, I follow him. We, we both catch the next light. He's getting on the highway, and I'm going straight, so we're sitting side by side, and I look over and check his bike out, and this guy is like hardcore, won't look at me, won't acknowledge me, and I'm just like, really, dude? Really? But, hey, whatever's whatever. And we parted ways, and nothing came of it. But, man, if you're, if you're going to rock colors, man, honor your club. Don't, don't be out being the biggest fucking asshole you can be. That ain't what that shit's about. I don't even have to be in a club to know that. You know, if you're just going to be a dick, just go be a dick, man. Why dishonor your fucking club? Anyway, point is, if you want to be in an MC, be in an MC. But just because you got colors on your back and 20 guys backing you, it's no excuse to be the biggest jerk off on the road. And that's my story. Uh, if you guys got anything similar, some dealings with some MCs, good or bad. Like I say, hey, no disrespect to anybody that's, that's colored up or patched up or in an MC. Uh, there was a time I was in Rabbit Hash. And I came out the, the Rabbit Hash clubhouse or whatever. And it's crowded. And as I walk out the door, I pretty much almost walk into a guy. And he stops. He looks at me, I look at him, and he steps back. Well, I step back and I offer him the way. And he waves me on like, no, no, come on, buddy. Super, super cool guy. Now I look up and I notice he's wearing an enforcer badge. If you know what an enforcer badge is, you know them guys ain't to be toyed with. They're scrappers. But the guy was super, super, super cool. Gave me the way. And, you know, just because you got colors, man, don't mean you have to be a dick. And just because you got colors don't mean you are. I'm just saying, some guys out there are ab abusing the privilege. But anyway, that's the story. Let's move on to some of this paint stuff. It don't quite look dry, but it's dry enough for what we're doing. Because this is just a bullshit presentation. So when you do this marbling, your black base... Once that's dry, you come back with your silver. Some guys will say white. Some guys will, they tell you, use a bright base. I use silver because I think the candy shines better over silver than white. You can do white, you, I don't, you can do whatever color you want to do your marbling. I use silver because I think it gives a brighter graphic. So I'm going to silver base this, and then I'm going to lay some plastic wrap over it. When you lay plastic wrap on there, if you crinkle it all up, your graphics are small and busy. If you don't do as many wrinkles, you get a bigger graphic, which is what I'm shooting for. And hopefully this video keeps running through the whole thing. So I'm going to silver, silver coat this and then plastic wrap it, and you'll see how easy it is. Check it out. Plain old plastic wrap. Cheap as shit. Don't cost nothing. Uh, man, you don't have to have high-end equipment to do any of this. 
you can do this shit with rattle cans and get a beautiful job. That's why I'm demoing with rattle cans. I got spray guns and compressors and all that, but you really, really don't have to have that. So check it out. And I'm going to lay this flat just because of the plastic, but you'll see how easy this is. And again, when you want to do a professional job, you're going to be doing all kinds of little steps in between this. This is just to show you how easy it is to get the look. So, that being said, this is a silver metallic. I generally recommend, if you're going to rattle can, keep all your rattle cans the same brand. Krylon to Krylon, uh, Rust-Oleum to Rust-Oleum. I'm actually mixing them today, so whatever's whatever. But before I do this, get you a piece of plastic wrap appropriate to whatever you're going to be wrapping. Sometimes you're going to be doing something big, use a big piece. Sometimes you'll be doing something small, use a small piece, whatever. They ain't, there's no rules in any of this, man. It's You do whatever, whatever you want. It, trial and error. Experiment around. And, of course, the plastic wrap doesn't want to come in the middle. There we go. But, yeah, I've been told a bunch of times, oh, you can't, you can't do that. Oh, when you paint like this, you have to use this paint and do it this way, and this won't work over that. And You know what? My experience is a lot of things I was told wouldn't work did work. So don't, don't just stick to that shit. You know, try stuff. Shit, okay. Uh, just for GP, a couple of the channels that I learned this from, one of them is Big Bandit 007. I don't know if he's still posting, but he was the one that turned me on to the marble effect. Another channel that's got a lot of good information is Custom Spray Mods. Uh, both of those guys can, can teach you some stuff. You don't have to know anything, and you can learn something from these guys. Okay, got my plastic, got my silver. Let's do this. You want some wrinkle. And like I said, the more wrinkles you put in there, the busier your graphic is. Some guys wait till it dries before they pull it off. I don't. I think that's fine. And yes, it's going to try to stick. It's wet. You see that? There is your marble effect. Not bad, huh? Set that to the side. It's already pretty much dry and sticky. I'm going to come back over this and hit it with a Duplicolor metal cast. It's actually supposed to look like anodized aluminum. But it's the same effect as candy paint. When you do a marbling effect, you want to use a candy paint. Because candy is semi-transparent. You see through it. That's why the graphic shows through. Check how easy this is, people. If I was trying to get into motorcycling and all I could afford was a cheap bullshit-ass bike, I would have no problem putting this kind of paint job on that bike. And it would immediately transform an everyday mundane bullshit-ass bike into something good-looking. And this, that's, this is the whole point. The whole point. Okay, here we go. Are you seeing it? I'm going to pull it a little closer so you guys can get a good look at these graphics. But that is not bad. And that took no effort at all. Are you feeling me? Yeah, you're feeling me. Ooh, that almost looks like a skull right there. I'm going to let that tack up and dry a little bit. Oh, I put a big nasty thumper on the edge. That's commitment. But that's all you do to get this, this marble effect. And you know what? I can fix that. Yeah, see? Look, it's like it never even happened. That's another thing, people. 
if you do a paint job and you get a bug in it or even when you're past this point when you're to the point of clear coating man don't let a minor smudge push you off the deep end and trash a decent paint job you can save that shit there's no need to break out the stripper and go back to bare metal I promise you it ain't over uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can do that I'll get into this will be the longest video I've ever made so I'm sorry if I'm dragging this out but I don't edit but that shit's a, that, from what I understand that's from right here from just about every vlogger moto vlogger editing is a pain in the ass so I don't even bother everything you see is how it is how it happens but pretty much at this point all we need to start doing is clear coating if this was a gas tank <coughs> excuse me if this was a gas tank because of the marble effect it makes a lot of texture you can, you can you can feel it once it's dry you can rub it you can feel it basically you're gonna have to bury that texture in clear coat and all that entails is clear coat it wet sand it clear coat it wet sand it until you get enough coats of clear and enough wet sands that basically there's no texture and you're left with just a glassy smooth perfect professional finish you can do that shit with rattle cans the only thing is it's not going to be as durable as the professional materials you know if you, if you get gasoline on it it's liable to etch into it uh, all that noise is my grandson going ape shit with this old school wooden go-kart we made but uh, yeah man it's it's so so it's so much easier than you might think and I'm probably over explaining this but I'm talking to the people who have never sprayed in their life you just watch me spray it I use literally no skill at all okay I, I do have some skill but the point is don't get too close don't go too slow don't put it on too heavy you know you can always put a little more on but you don't want like to just waterfall dump material on here I'm pretty sure that's tacky enough we can go ahead and clear it I'm not gonna sand it I'm not gonna scuff it I'm not gonna do shit to it I'm just gonna put clear on it because you really don't need to start doing any clear sanding until you start clear coating so here we go all this stuff is right off the shelf get it in any store And like I told you, getting that professional finish is just a matter of numbers of clear coats and wet sanding in between them. Wow, they child-proofed the shit out of this can. Oh, there we go. And if you got a bike that's already painted, that ain't the worst thing in the world because all you have to do is scuff that finish. Just, just prep that finish, or prep that surface, and refinish right over that shit. If that shit ain't coming off, there's no need to strip it. And you, man, you can make any bike look cool. Any bike. I don't care what it is. Take your Rebel 250 and slap this marble paint job on it. People are going to love that shit. <laughs> okay, here we go. And that is just one coat. I don't have a spray booth. I'm not. I'm. I'm been using rattle cans. And this is just the start. That's one coat of clear. To do a proper finish and have it look professional, you're probably looking at at least no less than four. Probably six because I'm sure you can see in the reflection. There's a lot of texture in that But check out the design. How sweet is that? And you can do this man. It's just that easy to make this look professional All I gotta do is let it dry wet sand it and keep clearing it let it dry wet sand it and clear it And it's just that simple folks But you know, let me know what you think of that and how easy it was. And, hey, if you got something going on, man, don't be scared. That's the whole point. Don't be scared. Give it a try. You, you, man, you can do this. Anybody can do this. 
I am not a professional. You don't have to be. But hit me up in the comments. I, I love having a small channel because I can talk to you guys and I will reply to every comment left. Good or bad, whatever. And let me know what you think of the, 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 the street stories. And, you know, if I get a positive on it, maybe I'll throw some more in there because <laughs> I got a bunch of them. I'm an old motherfucker. But it's that simple, folks. And this is just the beginning. I got multiple projects, my own bike. And hopefully I'll get my shit together and I'll see some of you guys on the street. Peace.